hello and welcome back to the Yogscast. Today, we're playing Thea, The Awakening. I'm joined by Ben. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. So this game came out over Christmas. It's, mm. a, it's a random mix of 4X, Civ, roguelike, card-based card combat game. It's crazy. It's a big mix. I yeah. played it, um, and I was looking for someone to play it with because they've just released a co-op patch, which is a standalone version of the game, except you play with a bro. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to play with me. I'm going to be the... Uh... This one with the red armor on and the sword. Okay, you, you can be the uh, the ginger guy with the beard. Oh yeah, well, uh, okay. So you, you're gonna you've got the short haircut. Are you, I think you might be a girl actually. Ben. I am a girl, but that, I can. That's cool. I'm a warrior though. That's the main thing. That's why I've got the sword. Right, and I'm gonna be a, a gatherer. We have to pick a god. A lot of them are locked actually, but we can pick Mokosh or Svarog. Which one do you, do you feel? Uh. Mokash is who I had when I played on okay. my own. She's, she seems pretty good because you get a bonus to gathering, which yeah. is which is something you do a lot of in this game. I'm going to be gatherers. Are you, have you picked? What I've have you picked, picked warriors. Okay. We're going to keep it on normal difficulty because, honestly, I think this game's pretty hard. Yeah. From what I remember. Um, but who knows? We'll find out. Also, I think making the difficulty go up just makes the world bigger. Right. Um, and because you only get one city... Uh, it feels like you... You're never going to go too far from your city, are you? never explore too, too far, no. So um, when this when this loads, we'll start off and we'll see we'll see what we spawn with. Mm. This is the most exciting part of any 4X game. Oh, yeah, I love the beginning of 4X. So yes. I've spawned next to a spider's nest, which is not, not ideal. Not ideal, is it? Uh, I've got uh, my expedition here in my town of Osto Ostoya. Ostoya. Now, this is all Slavic mythology. Okay, so that yeah. probably is some important place in Slavic mythology. Uh, you have spawned over here That's next me. to two dungeons. Yeah, I've got some, maybe they're goody huts. Maybe they've got monsters in. Your town is called Trzy Bzozzi. Yeah, I think we're going to butcher all these Slavic pronunciations. So oh. I'm going to rename all my stuff to something I won't embarrass myself saying. Okay, you put you put your guys into your city. Is that a good way to start? I like to, because they, they give you a, a, like a, um, an expedition party in a village. But I never like how um, how the characters are distributed. So I put them back in the village. And I'm going to redistribute them into a different setup. Okay, I'll do the same. So we start with eight people in a village. Okay, and each of your people actually has their own stats, their own breakdown. And the idea is to get them into a little expedition, send them back into the world, gather stuff to bring back to your village. Now, around the village, we do actually start with a couple of resources. Mm. Um, I start with wood, which is obviously pretty useful for building stuff. I've started with vegetables. Uh, which are great, and that is actually it. What have you got? Anything around you? Uh, what have I got? I've I've got vegetables ah. and wood in my starting village. But you've also got some and vines. I've got, got there. some vines over there, and I've got some string over here. So that'll be good for like making early clothes and like uh, gathering tools. Yeah, maybe maybe you can make some bows out of those vines. I think vines oh, are pretty good yeah, for making yeah. bows out of. It's pretty cool. Um, and you can equip all of your. Because oh, you're mostly warriors, I'm mostly cats. So let's have a look at what, what I. We're gonna have got. to do some more exploring to find better materials. Let's uh, rename my city actually first. Of yeah, all. I'm gonna I'm gonna rename my guys on a, like a Lord of the Rings vibe. Okay. Then I'll remember who's who. I'm gonna go with like a Game of Thrones vibe, but also I'm just gonna go with whoever my guys look like. So in here, okay, I've got my guys. So we've got uh, this this woman here with a with a big like bear um, a bear skin clothes. We're gonna call her. Uh, Igrit. <laughs> <laughs> she looks pretty badass. Uh, we've got another, we've got a lady, a lady warrior. So we start with a lady warrior called by her name of Kriz, Kriz, Krizislava. <laughs> and Mezka, she looks hopeless. Uh, she's just a, a gatherer, I see. So she's a, she is a gatherer. So she starts with a wooden sword and that's all. Uh, we've got, we've got this guy who looks like, he looks like the hound. For, for goddamn sure. Um, we got this guy who looks like the, a dwarf. He's, he's going to be Tyrion. Um, he's a human dwarf. He's not a dwarf dwarf. I think there are actually dwarves. Yeah, you got like dwarves, elves, orcs, demons. All kinds of uh, different people can join up. I don't know any many women from Game of Thrones who who were. I mean, some of them. Is, I've got this. I've got old Nan here. By the <laughs> old way. Nan, amazing. Uh, and she's got. Like a big hammer, that's her starting equipment. And she's wearing like a dog collar, a creepy kind of sex collar by the looks of things. So she's a craftsman. So I've got two craftsmen, four gatherers, a, a wa one warrior and one hunter to start with. Um, was, what, how is your party balance? So I've got to mine? four warriors, 
two craft, uh, two gatherers, and yeah. two craftsmen. Have you renamed any of your guys? Yeah, I'm. I'm just going with. I'm going to have the uh, basically the fellowship. Right. That's what I'm starting with. So even though this guy's not an elf, I am going to call him Legolas because he looks like a bit of a fancy lad. A um, <laughs> fancy lad. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, maybe no. Maybe she should be Legolas. Oh, I'm going to spell these wrong, by the way, so I am sorry. So once you've got your team, you can actually equip them. Um, I've started with a random mix of eclectic, quite crappy weapons made out of all sorts of junk. Yeah, I've got all sorts of nonsense here. And they have a huge amount of stats and attributes, okay? So Igrit's got a big combination. You can actually put a filter on by... Uh, something. So if, if we're talking about fighting, let's put that filter on. So she's got nine armor, nine damage, uh, five shielding, six range damage, eight traps, four stealth. All of this basically affects the combat in different ways. But yeah, we'll explain it when we actually get into warrior, combat. She only has armor, damage, and some pretty crap low level tactics. I'm going to call mine oh, Astapor. I don't know why, because it sounds a little bit like Australia, whatever. <laughs> Glory to Australia. <laughs> Glory to Astapor. <laughs> So, um, oh, the other thing is that in your village, you need you can mm. set people up to gather. So some of these gatherers I need to leave here in the village yeah, to look so after things. My plan is I'm sending out my four warriors to go exploring. Okay. And I'm keeping back my two gatherers are just going to start getting, like, wood, um, wood and food. Okay. Um, and then my two craftsmen are going to start making cooking food, I think, to start with. Okay, food. why don't you first of all go and do a dungeon? And uh, show people how that works. So if you move your okay. your ex expedition out so to one of those dungeons, is, uh, here. and then so we're going to go and explore it. I reckon there's probably going to be some combat be there. An encounter. Right. We've got you stumble across the ruins of an old city engulfed in mystery and mist. So this is like a post-apocalypse. The long night has ended, and we've like we're trying to like rebuild the world and survive. So. Yeah, there's been some sort of Armageddon. The yeah, white maybe walkers the white have come down, or the M Mordor has taken over the Shire. Who knows? I'm, of, so I'm the exploring the ancient ruins. Um, and this is all you got. This is yeah. Find a dusty cellar. As heavy doors crack, you are swarmed by bats. Two arms. Okay. I've got four deformed bats and three hulking rats. This is actually quite a lot for my um my four warriors. <laughs> this to seems fight like with. well, we might lose the game immediately. <laughs> right. It's okay. Fine. So what happens is half your card, each of your people is a card, and you get half of them to attack with and half of them to support with. Um. So you, depending what skills your people have will determine what support abilities they get. Yeah, so go into the combat. Um, well, first of all, you get the option to oh, mulligan. Are you going to mulligan? Um, yeah, I'm going to mulligan, because my my, my fightier guys are in support, so I'm going to mulligan. Okay. And then we're stuck with what we've got. You can't mulligan again. Right, and so they have the same. They split all of their So um, you've got your, your health here, which is like your armor piles. and your hit points. And then you've got your attack here, uh, depending on like what weapons you've got and stuff. A sword just means you do normal damage. Yeah. If you've got a hammer, that means you... Um, any overkill you do will hit the next guy. Okay. But I don't have any hammers. And there's lots of other weapons, but all, my guys have all got swords, so it's quite boring and straightforward. I'm going to stick Gimli in first. You've got Gimli, I feel right. <laughs> yeah. He's going he's gonna to start off. So the way you actually do it is they play out all their cards, you play out all your cards, and then they fight quite in a quite a strange way um, at the end. So it kind of, everyone takes their turns. If, if you play a tactical card out as a... A unit onto the field it gets confused and so there's two phases so all you get the, two rounds of combat yeah and if you're confused you miss the first round of combat and then you shuffle all your cards up and, and it's a bit confusing but you'll, you'll, you'll get it pretty fast yeah. so i just one of my uh, warriors is good at trapping which gave him the ability to counter offensive you're which right. meant i lost played that card and it just immediately discards one of their offensive cards before they can play it i mean that's actually i think one of the most powerful things in the game it's a really strong ability. But the problem is the uh, the creatures all have a level ranking. So these right. rats are level one and these bats are level two. So your skill has to be higher than their level. Yes. So if you're only like a level two trapper, it's only like tiny rubbish creatures that you can trap. You so can't. did you get a hunter? or No, just one of my warriors has like level one trapping. Oh, right. So you managed to discard a rat. Did you, yeah, it? I got rid of like a rat. That's actually not terrible. There are ways to increase the specific skills that are associated with that. So for example, I think trapping is associated with, um, sorry, yeah, so if you if you can find someone to give someone bonuses to traps, then they'll get bonuses to counter offense. Exactly, and then also other other skill checks. Yeah. 
because this is a combat check, but sometimes like a witch might cast a like a curse on you, and then you'll have to do a like a magic check rather than a combat check. Yeah, and then your it's like your intelligence will become your like strength value. It's a bit weird, but you get used to it pretty quick. I'm just going to send all my guys in to get closer. I'm not going to do any more tricksy tricks. Yeah, if I deploy them from my support hand, they go in confused, which means they don't strike in the first round. But that's all right. I mean, these bats are just rubbish. Have you had a round of combat already? Yeah, we did the first round where I killed a couple of bats. And we're now having the second round where I'm just mopping them up. This is, I mean, this is, this is, looks like you're winning. Have you taken any injuries? No, because um, most of my warriors have got shields. Oh, and a useful. shield gives you a bonus when, when you move into combat, you get like sort of six or seven uh, bonus, health. bonus health that don't, you don't get wounded if you lose them. And I picked up loads of goodies. I got some amber, some meat, and some granite. Okay, so that is all useful stuff. Now, the next thing to talk about is the way you can make tools, right? So I want mm. to, first of all, make... I want to get some crafting going on in my in my base, right? So yeah. um, I can do gathering, crafting, and construction in my base. So if I want to build a pasture, I'm going to need to put different materials down here, okay, to make, like, a pasture out of. Mm -hmm. So if I make it, I can make it out of wood and it will have certain properties, but I don't have very much of anything at the moment. So I need to get some guys gathering some stuff. So I'm going to send my, put my gatherers here to, to work. Actually, I'm going to put my worst gatherers here because I don't really need too much wood. Um, I'm going to leave a couple of gatherers at home and I'm going to, I'm going to leave Tyrion and Zoska and I'm going to take the other gatherers out to see if I can gather anything more valuable. Meanwhile, the crafters are going to, I'm going to, need to put to work. And the first things I should try and make are mm. gathering tools and crafting tools to boost their crafting and gathering levels. Mm. Uh, but I don't have enough resources to make either of these things at this point in time. Um, in my, I start with a couple of resources. I've started with a little bit of granite, a little bit of clay, a little bit of string, and a couple of bones. Um, but apparently none of those are actually going to be enough or useful enough to make any crafting or gathering tools. So... Whenever I craft something, though, it gives me um, research points. Yes, yeah, so I've got that up on my screen now. I've got this spider silk tunic that counts as armor, and it says here seven seven beakers when I build. Oh, you're about thing. to make one. Yeah. Okay, so you collect seven beakers of science from doing that, which is quite a lot. Like if I make it just a leather jacket, it only gives me one beaker. But spider silk that I started with five of is like a higher tier material. Yeah. So you get more tech from from making it. Basically, you have to kind of keep building stuff all the time. So if you just get that going. Yeah. So I'll stick one. Oh. And then... Stick one of my crafty guys on it. So he does 50 points of crafting a turn, needs 118, so it's going to take three turns to make. Sweet. And then if you go back to the main screen, you'll see that you have a, uh, a beaker thing up there. So once you get to 15 points, you can unlock a new resource. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to actually go and spend my resource on... Um, you can spend it on all sorts of crap. This is pretty confusing. But you can make weapons or buildings or or access new resources to gather on in the world. Mm. And so I'm going to want to gather some stuff to make better baskets with. And cane baskets or wicker baskets are usually pretty good. And also when you unlock them, it reveals a source and it gives you five. So yeah. I'm going to unlock wicker. It will give me five. It will show where it is on the screen. So it's absolutely oh a million miles away. Um, so I'm never going to go there and be able to get that. <laughs> not in a, not in a, well, I guess somewhere for me to head to, but holy crap, that's the have nearest goals, resource of Wicker. Jesus, what? I like to um, like save my tech points because... Oh, well, um, I don't. I like to just spend, spend them, them willy-nilly. Well, you get five Wicker straight up, so you can make one So basket. I'm going to make a Wicker basket um, with a bit of... Because I've got clay and I've got a little bit of wood hanging around. I like how it affects everything as well, because like if you make it with clay, it'll be quite good, but it'll be very heavy. You oh, see I one of those stats is the physical weight of the object. Heaviness. Because it's a clay basket rather than like a spider silk If I make it basket. with string, it's only 18, but it's one less gathering skill. Exactly, so it's like a smaller, lighter bucket. Right. Tools. I would like a heavy fucking awesome bucket, please. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, also it gives me a couple more science points. Can I make it with granite? No, I guess I can't with granite. I could make it with some fur yeah. leather. I would not want to be like chopping down wood with granite. Oh, there you go. Maybe I'll use... Bucket. So maybe I'll make it out of fur leather. So wicker plus fur leather... Plus, actually, no, I'm going to use the clay. Screw it. It's uh, heavier, but I'm not going to build anything with clay yet, so let's just get that going. Okay. And I think, do you know what? I might be able to make some clothes, too, with this fur leather. Cool. I'm going to clear out another little bat cave. Um, there we go. I'll make it a fur coat. Okay, you clear oh, out the nice. bat cave. Yeah, craft... I'm just going to auto-resolve this because they're, they're terrible. Oh, fur My warriors are badass. This does not give me much yeah. science at all, Don't Ben. Three me. is not... I need more than three. Yeah, you need to. You get more science for the higher the tier the materials you use. Right, I'm gonna need. Problem is, I've now 
the thing is, this is going to give me like not enough science to make a new, um, get a new level of science. But if I actually go and attack something or do some hunting outside, that will give me a couple of science points that I can get to the next. Yeah, I just research. cleared out a bat cave and got got a beaker out of it. Now, sometimes actually, since I unlocked Wicker, I can I've now unlocked the ability to see Nimble Wood, which is the oh, tier yeah. above Wicker. Right, that only requires one more science point, but because I can't actually see these question marked ones, they don't appear on the map. They don't yet. appear on the map at all. Yeah. And so I, I know that I've not. I might, I might have, for example, there might be some spider silk in this in this tile, but I can't see it because I haven't unlocked it yet. Uh, if it, or, or well, you would be able to see spider silk. Oh, spider silk, yeah, I can see that. I can't but see can't these see, types um, of words. Like mythril. Mythril comes after that, silver, I think. Is that silver? Yeah, so I can't see mithril deposits or, or any of these gem deposits or this leather deposit or yeah, these, or any of the yeah. Any of this. So yeah, that's something for me to work towards actually. So I guess we can probably trade, can't we? So maybe if we if we unlock different things on the tech tree and then then trade them. I wonder if we can trade. Efficient. That would be useful. If you yeah, make sure you don't research wicker then, since now you know it's pointless to do so yeah. as well since it's bloody miles away. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to end my turn. Can trade. All right, let me put old Nan and a grit on these fur coats and make an expedition. Now, when you make an expedition, mm. um, you have to, I'm gonna make it with these guys. Uh, you need to put, you need to give them a little bit of uh, wood to actually um, not basically yeah, just die need to, like, uh, fuel for your campfire every turn. Um, and they also need to have a little bit of food to keep them going. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of food. Now, the reason I'm not giving them too much is because I am, I've got a lot of gatherers in my team. Mm. And so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to head them, I'm going to move them straight out. They're going to the, live off the land. The town. Yeah, and they're going to hopefully discover something they can live off of out there. Yeah, so some vegetables over here. Yeah, my guys can't do that. My guys are better at fighting, but terrible so gonna, at living off the I'm land. I'm going to head onto these vegetables. Oh, here you go. Here is a source of nimble wood. So this oh. is this tier two wicker. So maybe I could just skip straight to yeah. Nimblewood, make a load of n Nimblewood bars. Oh, and instead. they'll be amazing because they're like really high tier. I hope they're pretty good. I'm still going to need a secondary material to make the baskets out of. Well, I've got vines near my town, so I can trade you vines for Nimblewood. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to camp and I'm going to send these guys to gather some vegetables overnight. And uh, then I'm going to end the turn because I think that's all I can do. Hopefully the spider's nest won't do it too much, but I've got four guys still working away in my village to defend it. Well, if you want, my my team of adventuring warriors can just clear that out for you. Okay, you, you can do that. Yeah, come and clear out and we'll see if we can trade, because I think it would be worth knowing of that. Yeah. How that works. Right, so that is the end of our first turn. Wow. So let's... Um, now I've got some more veg in this town. They are going to need some wood, actually. I'll so if you run... I found out... Um, if you run out of fuel to burn, yeah. your gatherers and craftsmen like uh, produce at half speed. Right, okay. So, um, And you don't heal your wounds because um, it's cold. It's freezing. And uh, unfortunately, the Shire is out of wood to burn. I've, well, I've burnt all my regular wood, and I've got elven wood, but I don't want to burn that because that's like a valuable building material. I see, it was like a special kind of wood. Yeah, so I'm going um, to go without fuel for a turn until I finish chopping down the regular wood. I'm going to allow my people to use dark wood and wicker yeah. because, sure, like I really don't think it's that... It's important right now. I'm Not just too gonna, valuable for you. Just until they get enough. Cause wood is so plentiful. I've got loads of wood around town. I figure, you know, uh, Zoska's going to stay at home just chopping wood. Maybe I should switch these guys around. Maybe Tyrion should work on the chopping wood and Zoska should work on the veg. I'm an equal opportunist, but I think that <laughs> a lady would look after the garden better than a man. Cause look, a man wants to chop wood. He will have more fun. I'm just, yeah. I'm about fun. Chopping wood yeah. is actually really fun. And like, it's not that women can't have fun chopping wood, but I think that, that look, I'm, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Uh, should I change it back? <laughs> I think <tr> <laughs> that, that's the sort of traditional approach, isn't it? Well, it's, yeah. If she wants to chop wood, you know, then she can. That's fine. She can chop wood later. They can swap. They can figure it out themselves. Look, I'm, I don't mind. Choose between. Sometimes it's better to delegate, though, Ben. You know, <laughs> just saying. So, uh, do, have, you ended, have you ready to I've end ended your turn? I've ended my turn, yeah. I don't have much going on yet. Still. All right. I think I might, uh, let's see how many, so, hmm, I get like one set, this will get me two sets of vegetables, so I'll, I'll, I'll end my turn, and, uh, oh, there's an encounter, a an old dwarf passes by my village, stopping mm -hmm. only for a chat, a drink and a chat, so I've got a chance to either rob him blind, mm -hmm. share a drink, then kill him and take his stuff, Ooh. or have a drink with him. Is this in your village or in your expedition? In camp? my village. 
Ooh. But he's only one dwarf, so he can't be that But bad. you don't have any of your warriors there, though, do you? Like, he might actually be able to kill all your, like, basket weavers. And he might be some sort armors. of dwarf ninja. Yeah. Uh, he says... Oh, he's, ah, as you share a drink and some stories, he tells you of an old mine he knows. He marks a location on his map. <gasps> it's a mm. mithril mine. Oh, my God. Where is it? About a million trillion miles away. <laughs> it's so far away that I can barely Does see. Does it even appear on my oh, map? Oh, no, it's far to the left. Far, left. To, the, far to the west. Oh, oh, that's not that far away. That's like three turns movement. Now, what is the chances that down in the mithril mine... Mm. There's going to be some monsters. There's going to be horrible monsters, yeah. Yeah.